Okay, so I'm here with the Motorola XT420 radio. And really, what I'm doing in this is trying to justify spending £100 on a radio when I could just buy one of these for 10 or £15 each. £100? 10 or £15? And uh, what's the difference between them? They're both 0.5 of a watt, aren't they? They're both uh, PMR446. They're both... They're, they're going to transmit the range on these two devices. Let's not make any mistake here. The range on these two is going to be very similar. You're not going to get much better performance out of this. So why do people buy Motorola's? Well, firstly, you pay for the name. No doubt about that. The Motorola name commands a certain respect in the industry. They've been around for ages. And as a result, they have an established company which is global, it means you've got support for your devices. If you're a business using these, you could be on a support contract, which means that you could get a new device out within 24 hours. They'll just ship one to you, no questions asked. And that kind of thing's really important to businesses. You know, I don't think you're gonna, you, they might offer this, I don't know. I haven't really looked into the support contracts of Retivis, they might offer that, that kind of thing. But from a business point of view, as far as risk is concerned, it's going to be lower using a company like Motorola. Then, of course, you've got your standards. These are uh, these conform to various military standards. Uh, I don't, you know, they're not massive mil spec radios, but they do. They are tested to certain mil standards, and I'll put those up on screen for you now, so you can see which ones they are. They also are put through this some kind of five-year endurance testing thing that Motorola do. I, I don't know whether it's actually sort of worth anything, but it, it's something they do, and it's something that obviously people probably respect who are in the industry. Then we come round to the actual product itself, and we'll take a closer look at the, uh, the product now. Firstly, the build quality is absolutely fantastic. It feels great in the hand. The finish of the plastic is just really nice, and... <sighs> You know, I'm not just trying to say this again because I'm justifying the cost, but you know the difference between kind of an expensive car and a cheap car is usually not the fact that one, they both get you from A to B, it's the fact that one just kind of everything fits together nicely. All the parts are nicely finished and, and there's no kind of moving bits and bits that kind of knock about and it all fits together really nicely and just feels fantastic in the hand. If I just turn this off and pop out the battery, we'll take a look at the back of the radio as well. And from there, you can get an idea of kind of how thick this plastic is around the outside of the radio. And then it's all supported by this internal metal structure. Around the battery terminals here, this is all weather sealed, and I'll show you on that, that on the battery in a second. But you can get, a, hopefully you can get a sense of, I mean, just the feel of this. If you can get an idea of the quality from looking at uh, the build quality there, you get an idea of the sort of, you know, why this might be a slightly more expensive radio. Let's take a look at the battery. And the cell is 2100 milliamp hour. And 2100 milliamp hour is important because the battery that comes with, for example, this radio is 1100. So you're getting much, much better capacity. The voltage is the same, by the way, for anyone who uh, kind of is, would be questioning that right now. The voltage is the same. So 2100 milliamp hour is a far higher capacity as standard. You're getting weather sealing here. I mentioned the weather sealing and there you can see the rubber seal around the battery terminals. So a lot of the time, it's just kind of God is in the detail, so to speak. You know, it's those little touches that they, that they add to their radios that make them just a little bit better. This clips on really easily, so you can fit a new battery, dead simply like that. It just clunks on into place and, you know, feels good. Let's take a look at the buttons on the top now. And... The channel switches here are good. They're nice and positive. They move, but they don't move too easily. So you're not gonna change those by accident. Uh, and the same with the volume, the on off switch and the volume switch. I'll just turn the radio back on. Battery level high, channel six. They've got these two little dimples on the top and that's something that's missing from the, uh, from the Retivis radio. And I miss that because you can feel exactly where the volume and the channel button is without doing anything on the radio. 
I wish they were painted white. That would probably make a, a bit of a, that would be a nice touch as well. But uh, just, just a black little dimple there. Nice, again, just a little detail that makes a difference. This LED flashing. I thought that would be really annoying to start with, but it's actually, again, really handy. You can see at a glance if a radio has been left on. It's just a sort of thing that's useful. The buttons around the side, these two multifunction buttons that can be uh, programmed to a couple of different functions as uh, with the CPS software. They've got the two little dimples on there so you can easily tell which one's the bottom one and which one's the top one. Uh, I have these set to call tone, which is like that. And this one is set to the monitor, which essentially temporarily turns off the squelch so you can hear the transmission. Uh, you can hear the white noise underneath and potentially hear a weaker transmission. Then we've got the, the holster. Now, I thought this, again, was a silly idea to start with. I was thinking, why would you want to have... Isn't it just awkward to have this in a holster rather than just having it clipped on your belt? Well, firstly, it allows this belt clip to be rotated, which could be useful for some people. Again, I'm not too sure how I would use that. But, uh, but this is designed to stay in the holster. I thought... I'm try and put it in the right way around. I thought originally that this was meant to come out of the holster when you wanted to use the radio, but it's designed to stay in the holster. And that's good because it provides an extra layer of protection right around the bottom of the radio and up the whole back of the radio. And obviously if this falls on the floor and lands on this, it's gonna be this that cracks and replacing this is much cheaper probably, well I hope so, than replacing the radio. And also little touches like this, the little belt, the little lip around the end, nice little uh, sort of, you know, it's not, not a tiny lip that's going to slip off. It's a good solid amount of plastic that they've flipped over there. And um, yeah, that's going to kind of hook onto anything if the radio does slot off. It's probably just going to be your last line of defense before the radio comes off. The ports, of course, as you would expect, are fully sealed. This is a little bit plasticky, this, this little bit, but it fits on very nicely. And if you're not using that port when the radio is in use, it's going to provide good weather protection. Then we have the fact that you can charge the device, whether it's either in the holster, without the holster, or you can just slot the battery as is onto a charger. All right, so what about functionality? Well, the audio quality on this is, is good. Um, I'd say as far as actual speaker quality goes, the two are fairly even. They're both very loud. Uh, this one's a 1.5 watt speaker. I think this is a one watt speaker. So they're both, they both got a decent volume on them and you can hear yourself. You can hear transmissions quite easily when you're, uh, when you're using the radios. But one thing I have noticed, uh, yeah, I said the range isn't going to be massively different. One thing I have noticed is that this radio performs much better in relation to squelch tails. So a squelch tail is the noise that's made when you're receiving a transmission and it ends. And just that moment before the squelch turns back on, you get a little and that's a squelch tail. I'm sure a lot of people watching this video know much more about me, much more than me about that kind of thing. Radios prevent that by transmitting a tone as this button is released which tells the other radio that the transmission has ended. As such the radio can immediately engage the squelch rather than having to determine it by the fact the transmission's ended, if you know what I mean. That's fine because this radio has, uh, a, has a uh, end transmissions tone. Uh, I think it's set to something like 190 hertz or something. And these radios have one of those as, as well. In fact, I did a, uh, an audio test on these, and you can see it on the waveforms that I was doing. At the end of the, every transmission, you can see a little low frequency, and that's the tone that's transmitted to tell the other radios that um, they finished transmitting. So anyway, I'll try and get to the point here. If you transmit from an RT24 to an RT24, it works perfectly fine. If, however, you transmit from a Motorola to an RT24, this can't hear the tone from this one and as such you get well i'll show you rather than talking about it let's just do a little test Battery level, 
Okay, now I might get a bit of feedback here, so apologies for that in advance, but let's take a listen. So I'm gonna transmit with the Motorola and go to the RT24. Each time you get that noise. That is fine, but when you've got your radio turned up and you've got a lot of transmissions starting and stopping, it is really annoying after a while. Again, I state RT24 to RT24 works absolutely fine. But this one, I'll just transmit to that now and you can hear the difference. Nothing. Even though this is sending a different tone when it ends the transmission to this one, to, to the one that this one is expecting, <clears throat> it still happily deals with it and ends the transmission totally silently. And you know, that's the sort of thing where I think, that's the sort of thing that isn't really discussed enough on videos. And I wish I you know, was an electronics engineer and could take this thing apart and figure out exactly how it works and how much better the, filter, the transmission quality is, the filters that are used, the, the general transmission quality from an electronics point of view is compared to something like this. Because that's something that, you know, people just say, oh yeah, it transmits, half a watt, job done. But a transmitter is not a transmitter. You get different qualities of transmitters. And, and you know, no one ever talks about what those differences are between them, but it kind of makes me think that that is something that you need to think about with these radios, because just a small difference in functionality like that makes me think that this is actually doing a much more competent job internally with electronics than this. This is made to a budget. They're selling these for 10 pounds, 10, 15 pounds a piece. There must be a difference there. Anyway. That's enough on that. I, I just wanted to talk about some of the differences with this radio and just kind of go, in, go around it in a bit more detail. Thank you very much for watching. And if you do have any questions on this radio or you use one yourself and you've got any additional points to add that you like about it, let me know in the comments. I will speak, uh, see you soon. Thanks, bye.